All right, let's look at this problem and solve it. Go a little bit quicker this time. A bullet is fired from a gun at a 30 degree angle to the horizontal with a muzzle velocity of 600 meters per second. Might sound similar to a problem we had before, except now it's launched at an angle. We want to know the horizontal range of the gun. Remember when you see this word range, you know you're looking for DX. All right, so this gun is fired at a 30 degree angle and it's gonna go like this and we want to know what is this DX. We want to know how far it goes. The first thing you do, the very first thing you do whenever you see an angle and a velocity is you must resolve the vector into x and y components. So here's my vector. The velocity goes over here on the hypotenuse, 600 meters per second. x component, y component. x is v cosine theta, which is 600 cosine, and this is the 30 degree angle. 600 cosine 30. Y is 600 sine 30. Remember our shortcut for X and Y. V cosine theta and V sine theta. 600 cosine 30. 600 sine 30. Oop. Six hundred cosine thirty, that's the X component, gives us five nineteen point six. And that's in meters per second. Uh, sine gives us 300 even. That's the Y component. All right. So here we go. We'll separate X and Y. My VX I know is going to be the X component that I came up with. That's the velocity in the X direction. And it's 519.6. DX I do not know and that's what I want to find. I also don't know time. In the Y direction. All right. I know acceleration in the Y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And VI and VF for the trip up. VI in the Y direction for the trip up is going to be my Y component that I found. So that's 300 meters per second. VF on the way up, remember our picture at the front, VF on the way up, it's going to stop at the top and then begin to come back down. Uh, it won't stop in X direction, by the way. It's just the Y component of the velocity that, in, that uh, momentarily will be, will be zero. So VF is zero, and that's also VI for the trip down. And for the trip down, VF is going to be the negative of whatever VI up was. So this is going to be negative 300 meters per second. Wouldn't be that way if we were considering air resistance, but we're not doing that, thank goodness. Delta D in the Y direction, we don't know it. They don't tell us how high it rises. All right, so I ultimately want to find this, which means I need to find this. And remember that if we're finding the range, the dx, that this really needs to be the 2t probably that we need to find. Or we plug the t in and the dx that we'll get will be half of it and we'll multiply that by 2. So first we need to find time. All right. Whoops. t. I forgot the t. We don't know time. All right. That's what we need. The only other unknown on this side for the y side is delta d, which means we don't care about it. So my equation now still guess method. I want T and not delta D. So here we go. T and not delta D. This is your guy. You might have noticed already that for projectiles launched at angles, we don't only have one equation anymore. Remember with the horizontal projectile, this was always our equation, at least in this class. It won't be that way anymore. Now you could have any one of these four for the Y side. So our equation is uh, the fourth one, or the first kinematic equation. VI plus AT. And remember, we have to pick either the trip up or the trip down. We can only analyze one at a time. So let's pick the trip up. VF is 0. VI is 300. A negative 9.8 times T. Subtract 300 from both sides. And then negative 300 equals negative 9.8 T. Divide both sides by negative 9.8. And 300 
divided by 9.8 gives me 30.6. So I know the time is 30.6 seconds, like half a minute, right? Half a minute to reach uh, the maximum height. Half a minute for this thing, 30.6 seconds to go from here up to here. Because remember, we only analyzed the trip up. All right, so that's my 1T, right? That's my time. I know that I'm finding the horizontal range of the gun. Therefore, the time that I need to enter in over here is going to be this 2T, all right? So you can do it here or here. doesn't matter. 2T is multiplying by 2. 30.6 times 2 gives us 61.2 seconds. So 2T equals 61.2. And I might go ahead and take that over here to the other side. 61.2 seconds is the time that it's going to take uh, over the entire length of this trajectory. Vx equals dx over t is our equation. 519.6 equals dx divided by 61.2. We can either cross multiply or multiply by 61.2 on both sides. It's the same thing. Either way, you end up with 519.6 times 61.2. And we get 31,799.5 in meters. And this is just a cosmetic thing because it's such a big number. We might want to change this to kilometers to make it sound a little bit better. To go from meters to kilometers, that's moving the decimal three places to the left. One, two, three. And if we round it, it looks a little bit better. That becomes 31.8 kilometers. Either way, it's correct.